once again, Lionel Legacy System, our uh, legacy users group, is not associated with Lionel. Um, our only association with them is just the, uh, the enjoyment of the Lionel Legacy System. And uh, we're here to trade information, uh, exchange information, and just uh, talk about Lionel Legacy. As you uh, might have noticed, if you were in the hall yesterday, Dave and Dean are not here from Lionel, who usually attend. Uh, Dave was nice enough to go through the uh, questions and answers, or questions, and give us the answers for those uh, questions submitted. Um, so in, in a few minutes, we'll read those off. Again, we're going to do a... Uh, a brief history of uh, legacy, uh, as much as I could find it and gather from the, from the web and uh, from uh, my experiences. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about the Lionel, uh, the legacy signal booster that John uh, finally brought into uh, production after Dale started the uh, process and brought that out. So I've got a sample here, and uh, if he's up to it, at, answer any questions and maybe give a little, uh, just a few seconds on what it's all about. Uh, Bob Phillips, I don't know if he's here yet, he's going to come in hopefully and talk about his two legacy DVDs and his new book. I don't know if you've seen that, he's in a booth right up here at TM Books. Um, I think the DVDs and the uh, book are on sale here at the York Meet. As I said, this, and you probably can't read it right now, but this could be our shortest legacy meeting. I want to remind everybody that come April, there is no meeting in April, and we'll resume again in the fall. Uh, the decision was made based partially on just the response on the forum. You, typically, when we post a meeting, we get up to four or five pages worth of questions and just comments of people coming. We barely made it to page two, and I think that's a two-fold thing. Part of it is legacy has been out there so long, I think a lot of the questions have probably been covered. The forum is a wealth of information. A lot of the questions get answered on there. And right now, Lionel, I think the latest thing that's coming out is the, the um, CSM, and we really haven't had a ton of information on that, but those modules from what uh, Dave has told me are on the water, so they should be coming out soon. So with that, we'll get into the presentation of the Q&A. The first question was, the radio tower, the sound box cars, should really be commandable LCS devices as well. Why not make them LCS devices in their own right? The general explanation is to issue a command through LCS infrastructure, and it gets, these, gets to these devices in some manner. Example might be to issue a sound selection on those devices at a point in time or location based on an engine going over a sensor track. They'd have to add receivers to get commands and they'd probably need to add the command set and such. So basically this question is, can some of the sound cars they released recently, when they go over the sensor track or when an uh, engine goes over the sensor track, is there anything that could trigger these cars? The radio tower, and this, these are the uh, responses from Dave. The radio tower and freight sound cars were never designed to be TMCC compatible devices. The Bluetooth radio tower is simply a product you connect to your smartphone to, so that you can stream any audio of your choice. I do not see what use it would be to add TMCC radio other than to remotely change volume settings and turn it on and off. The freight sound cars are just sounds of trains on rails, clickety-clack, coupler, slack bangs, flange squeal, etc. A basic sound set that would provide no real value if adding a TMCC radio. This was the same reasoning for not adding radio to the UP excur excursion generator car that only had sounds of a running generator. There are also other reasons for not adding radio to so many products. Radios increase cost and complexity. Sale trends have shown that there is much more interest in simple accessories and sound cars than there is in the command environment. We obviously continue to support command-able products in LCS and LCS. We choose to focus our limited development resources on products we feel bring more value to legacy LCS realms, such as the new LCS modules, CSM2, etc. Again, um, I always, 
I always start off by saying, if there are products you want to see, go to the booth, whether they, they hear you or not. But I, I would hate for them to say, well, we never knew this. So the best way to go is go to the booth, request something. If they get enough requests, then obviously, then they're, they, they got to look at that as a, uh, there is a uh, value to that. Um, with the way all companies are today, it's basically, you know, will it make money for the company at the same time, so. Can you control two legacy engines separately with Bluetooth with the same engine number, is it, or is it the same as a Line Chief Plus where they operate together? This would apply to an engine with the same SKU numbers. So basically the question is, and uh, starting, I think it was the brass hybrid from last year, the, uh, they, they started incorporating Bluetooth in it. So you could run it from the universal remote, you could run it from the Bluetooth app, or you can run it from legacy. So the question is, if you have two of the same legacy engines, say uh, two Polar Express steamers on one layout, will both operate from the same Bluetooth controller? Answer was, Bluetooth legacy engines act independently, even if they are the same SKU number. If you have two of the exact same engine broadcasting, the universal remote will only control one at a time. Likewise, on the Bluetooth app, two instances of the same engine image and the description would show up with only one being controllable at, this, at one time. This is due to the devices having a four digit hex or unique four digit hex IDs. Each Bluetooth device has a different hex ID even when it's the same SKU. An exception of this is where there is a device that is a subclass of the master, for example, a powered B unit would have the same Bluetooth ID as the A unit, but a different subclass. So the Bluetooth controller would connect to both engines at the same time. Hopefully that's not confusing. So just to summarize, if you have two Polar Expresses, they will act as two independent engines. So when you turn, when you connect to one with the universal remote or app and you change the throttle, only that one engine will move, the other one will sit there, and you'll have to connect to that engine. So it's, it, it is different from the line chief line. So, so Marty, basically you're saying that with Bluetooth, you can't MU anything? Unless it is intended to be like an ABA or something, yes. Any plans to have either Legacy Controller or the LCS iPad app to be able to control Bluetooth or line Lionel Chief Plus engines and legacy engine cars, so you only need one controller going between engines and LCS accessories. So again, this is one of those, we actually have this question that's come up a lot. Can a legacy controller or a legacy system be interfaced to the LCS interface so that you're only using, for those that want to buy some Lion Chief Pluses and, and to have legacy and use one controller, can the legacy controller, or is there any plans for the legacy controller to be able to talk uh, out to those uh, legacy, or to those Line Chief Plus engines? I believe the question is, will we make it possible to run Line Chief engines with the legacy controller? The answer is, that is something that may be in development, but a timeline cannot be estimated at this time. So again, I would uh, swing by the line out booth and maybe uh, just mention it. It'd be really kind of cool if we could do that. Uh, personally, I find some of the Line Chief Plus engines very desirable, but at the same time, I'm not really sure I want to have another remote control or a set of remote controls hanging around. And I can see if you had young kids and or a, or a, an early adopter, might you want might want to get a Line Chief Plus engine form rather than a legacy engine. It'd be nice that they could operate it from dad's remote or what have you. My question is, will Lino eventually upgrade the legacy iPhone app so that you can increase or decrease the amount of momentum for the M setting like you can with the Cab 2 remote? Right now, I think the settings are locked at one for low, four for medium, and eight for high. Also, would they consider adding the speed limit feature as well? We will add these ideas to the list. There are plans to revamp the app in the future. So um, those familiar with the, with the iPad app or iPhone app, we've covered that in the past. Um, it, it basically emulates the Cab 2 to, to most 
to a degree, but there are still some features. So it sounds like they're uh, actually starting to work on that a little bit. So maybe we'll see something soon. Is the Lionel defect detector an LCS device? If not, why not? And would you make it one? This came out in the uh, latest, uh, latest catalog that was released about, uh, I guess, a month ago now. It's a defect detector. Basically, it counts cars going across, counts uh, axles, and randomly spits out. Now, we haven't seen this, so I'm going from the catalog description, but it'll randomly spit out errors, uh, I guess, as like hot boxes and stuff like that. The new defect detector runs off of track power and is, uh, is an automatic accessory, i.e. has no TMCC radio. Controls are limited to a min-max switch and a volume potentiometer. The min-max, from what I understand, it just cuts down on the amount of defects it detects, so you're not constantly having that uh, interaction. This goes back to being an, an accessory designed for the general hobbyist not the L legacy LCS enthusiast. At this time, there is no plan to make a command control version of the defect detector. LCS IRV2 plus IRV2 add-on sensors. Differences in operation from the sensor track. Uh, for those not familiar, Lionel is developing a sensor module, which is this guy here, that basically will go into any track system. So the complaint has always been you develop the, the, the uh, sensor track, but I have uh, Gargraves, or I have Ross track, or I have uh, MTH track, or even tubular track. So Lionel came up with this device. Basically, it's another LCS module. It comes with two of those sensor devices that plug back into the module. You can buy two more, so that each, each module will handle up to four sensors. So basically, any track system you have, you can now put a sensor on. And the, the answer to that was, no differences in operation. The task was to create, to create a sensor track technology that would give the same operation, but give the ability to use it on other track systems other than fast track. So again, we haven't seen this. So my assumption is when, when you program it, uh, well, I don't know. How, there, there is programming buttons on it. So each sensor module would act as a sensor track would, and from what I understand, the LCS partner HiRail and E-Trains also are able to talk to your sensor tracks and remotely program them. I would assume they would come up as four separate sensor tracks, but again, we haven't seen this, so I'm just making an assumption here, but I have talked to uh, the gentleman, Brian, that makes the um, HiRail app, and he says he, he can interface to this, I believe, and it'll look like four sensor tracks. And I'll, I'll make sure that uh, I'm not speaking out of turn and get a, get a little bit of information from him. Uh, I'm sure he might have not even seen these yet either. LCS STM2 versus LCS CSM2 for DZ2500s. Do you need both? Do you need a breakout board? The STM2 only provides throw position of a switch machine. The CSM2 provides the serial data line that the DS, DZ2500 needs to be command control. The CSM2 gets rid of the need to use the DZ2001 data driver. The CSM2 also provides the throw position of up to seven DZ2500 switch machines, so no separate STM2 is needed. The breakout board is not needed. Its purpose is to simplify wiring and replacing a DZ2500 easy. It also protects the DZ2500 for possible damage caused by derailments and switchers. So you will not need an STM2. It's built into the CSM2, and uh, you do not need the breakout board. And, and this is the breakout board, because there was another question, so I got pulled that from the Lionel website. The LCS CSM2 DZ25 breakout board, how does it work without a DZ2001 data driver? Is it the same as the ERR board or has it been changed? The CSM2 is needed to provide the serial data to the DZ2500. Without the CSM2, the DZ2001 is needed regardless if the breakout board is used or not. The newest revision of the breakout board that was included in the latest Lionel Volume 2 catalog is the same as the ERR version, but with a three-pin push-button connector included to allow for the easy wiring of the DZ2500 
25002 push button. So the answer is there's really no difference. It's more, uh, I guess, a connectivity uh, change just to make it easier. This is a question on the LCS uh, app for the iPad. When editing track plan diagrams in the LCS app, the magnification feature does not work, spreading of the thumb and finger pointer. Can, will the engineers turn this feature on? It will make tapping, selecting, labeling boxes and other items much easier. Good catch. We will look at this while updating the app. The LCS app has been going, undergoing improvements for about a no month now including support for new devices such as the AMC2. We hope to see the new update on the pub, out to the public sometime in the first quarter of 2019. What is the status of creating the ability to upload LCS diagrams to the cloud? And uh, for, you, for you folks unfamiliar with the iPad app, you can create a diagram of your layout, have switches, throw switches from it, uh, when trains go over sensor tracks, it identifies the, the engine and the direction, and those are put on the iPad, and this, this question is, is there any way to offload that from the iPad and store it? I have provided Marty, that would be me, with a document that Rudy created that outlines, outlines how to back up the LCS app data to a computer. That backup can be used to restore the app if an iPad fails or the data can be transferred to a different app. This currently is the only way to store LCS diagrams. Now I have that sheet. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to get a bunch of printed out. So when I post the summary, I'll make that a PDF available on the summary on the forum. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out for Rudy Trubit. I hope I pronounced his last name correctly. He's Railsons on the uh, OGR forum. <clears throat> Rudy has been helping us since the beginning of this meeting, um, you know, back some 10 years. I actually think he had a chance to attend one probably six, seven years ago now. But uh, he worked with John out in uh, California. He's uh, currently the audio engineer for Lionel. Uh, just wanted to thank Rudy because I think he's one of the guys we kind of look over because we always see Dave here. We always see John on the forum, uh, Mike Reagan when he was with Lionel. So uh, Rudy, Rudy was a a big help in keeping these meetings going because he was one of the part of the team that answered a lot of these questions. So again, I'd like to thank Rudy personally for, for uh, participating in our meetings, even if uh, off, off, off campus, so to speak. How do you change the order of the LCS diagrams? I would like to swipe less. Again, once again, when you design on the iPad, each screen you do it the way I guess Lionel envisioned it, you would do a section of a layout. So if you had a yard, that would be one page. If you had uh, another loop or a turntable section, that would be another page. And the, the question is, can you move the order of that, those once you build them? The order can er cannot be changed currently. So a lot of lead up to that. There is. There's an LCS SCR2 which connects to a serial, connects a serial to the LCS bus. I just bought one, but I got thinking, wouldn't it be nice if there is an LCS USB one for connecting by USB, of course, directly instead of through a converter? No plans at this time to create an LCS module to convert USB to serial. I think one thing that gets overlooked, even though it says it in in the catalog, or well, it used to say it in the catalog, you don't connect the computer or any kind of PC through the SCR2 to talk to the legacy system. It doesn't work. Um, that's more for driving uh, the, the uh, switch machine controllers that, the, that, uh, that uh, the DZ things, anything with a serial data chain, but it, it was, uh, never really did work with the computer. Talk, have the computer connect, you always had to go directly to the base. Where is, Li where is Lionel on what Dave Olson indicated a slide at the April 2018 lug meeting? They'd like to produce an IR sensor kit that people could buy and install in their existing equipment. This is what's needed to get together with forthcoming sensor track that are independent from a special and expensive piece of track, the IRV2. 
additional sensor and additional sensors to give us the potential to integrate LCS into the layouts in a significant way. So the question is, will they come up with a kit to put in older legacy engines, other uh, box cars of our choice or tenders? I know John has uh, asked about this several times because of projects he does. Uh, unfortunately, while the IR sensor kit is possible, current market, market conditions do not warrant it. Lionel is st still sitting on a stock of IR sensor REA reefers. The poor sale performance of that car indicates that demand for the technology is currently not what is needed to be able to market a sensor kit that would require significant MOQ. So it, they're, they're saying there's just not enough demand for it. Um, I, I kind of think if it was a kit, there might be more demand for a kit than a box car. So maybe they ought to tear down the box cars and sell the components. Also going forward, we're a lot, and this is a pet peeve of mine, and I've talked to Dave about it. I think we've all kind of um, expressed our frustration on the forum a little bit. Also, going forward, will Lionel do a better job of publicizing and explaining the concept of benefits of LCS? The catalog would be a great place to start. What was in Lionel's two, 2018 catalogs was wholly inadequate. I, being Dave, I'm now the product manager for the LCS line, so I'm working to expand the marketing strategy around the LCS. My first step in doing so was, to build, was in building the LCS display that was in the booth at the last two York shows. And I do say was because it is absent at this show. And unfortunately, I don't really think anybody over there, most of them are, are, are production folks, so they're, they're going around with the crowd. So. Dave kind of stayed at that boot or at that position and was able to answer questions. I don't think they have anybody that can do that, so I'm sure that's part of the reason it's not there. But um, what was in the catalog this year was what I could fit in the space, that what I was allowed to have, so it's likely not to be much expanded there. It is planned to give the website, which is they have an LCS portion of the website, a facelift in 2019, as well as create and add videos for each LCS module that will show its uses and installations. Um, so here at York, it doesn't look like we're going to see much more. Hopefully, uh, uh, Dave has been doing some videos on things as they come out, and they're actually pretty good videos. I've posted a few of them on, on the uh, OGR forum when I come across them, and Dave usually does so too, so um, we'll just have to see on that. I personally don't think they do enough. I mean, I think here at York, they could have somebody walking around with a legacy controller showing people what legacy can do while they're running the trains. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, certainly when Dave was there and uh, Dean and, and some of the folks that were at the layout by the legacy stuff, he was more than happy to answer questions. But right now, I just don't see anybody over there that not necessarily is willing to do that, but is able to do that because of all the other commitments in the booth. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of trying to push legacy and LCS wherever you can. And I always thought just a sensor track on the layout with a screen and an LC, L, LCS setup on a screen sitting there would be just enough to draw some attention. In a previous lug meeting, there was talk of a TMCC legacy track signal car. Is this still something that Lionel is looking at? We did a prototype for a track signal car and tested it thoroughly. It performed well and was able to find poor signal spots on some very large layouts. <clears throat> Marketing de deemed it was not a product that would have significant amount of orders to justify producing it. So again, this is one of those things, if we want it, you got to let them know. Um, I'm also a big proponent of if you ask for it, you should buy one kind of thing. So uh, I, I would encourage you to go to Lionel Booth if you want one. But if you're going to ask for one, then you should probably follow up with the commitment. There seems to be a lot of interest in the new LCS CSM2 and breakout boards. Do you have any, any advanced documentation we can share on this? 
Same with the IRV2. I know it works similar to the sensor track, but if you have any additional information to share on setting up, it'd be great. The user manual that is included with the CSM2 and boards go in depth how to connect the CSM2 to your DZ2500s. Instruction diagrams are included for use with and without the optional breakout board. The CSM2 is on the water and on the way to line out as of the first week of October. Expect to see them in November or December. So that was my question. I wasn't able to really pry any more information out of them as such, such as an advanced user manual. but. Um, Apparently, within a couple weeks, hopefully, we'll all see that. LCS as a whole seems to be a sticking point for a lot of folks. I guess I know where I need to concentrate some efforts, and that was my comment to Dave. Dave responded, we also have it on our task list to assist the public in LCS education by creating instructional videos, limited resources, and time always seem to be our hang-up. And that was, that was the... Uh, the amount of questions we had. Again, I can't emphasize it enough. Encourage you to visit the Lionel booth, talk to the production folks. Ryan's over there. Um, he's probably the first person I would go to. Um, and if there's any, any uh, item you want to see built, he's the guy to push, I guess. DM TMCC signal buffer, as you all all know John's been working on this. Uh, Dale Manquin started this project, um, and unfortunately, it was taken away from us much too early. Uh, Dale started this for larger layouts, and uh, I believe he was working with John at the time that he passed, and uh, John saw fit to uh, take it to the next level. Uh, I bought one. I got the, uh, the base of it here. It comes with a power supply and a little... Uh, Ground jumper. I don't know what the official name of that is. Okay. So again, developed by Dale, and after Dale's death, John took it up. Provides a better track, and correct me if I'm wrong in any of this. Uh, provides a better track earth ground signal for larger and troubled layouts. Lowers the source impedance. Can triple the signal in most cases has built it, some built-in troubleshooting LEDs to help identify base issues, and I think several people have identified issues with their bases and had them fixed. It's also available in kit form now. Uh, we, all, we all know where the uh, manufacturer is to get help, and I think this is probably one of the greatest things here, is the portion of the proceeds go to the, the American Cancer Society in Dale's name. So. Um, People like John that help us on the forum and come up with these, these uh, products and, and continue on products that might, somebody else might have started and, and taken it to the next level. I think we owe John a round of applause for doing this. I saw John or uh, Bob Phillips walk in, so we're going to turn the floor over to him so he can uh, talk about his DVDs and book. My name is Bob Phillips. and. Uh, I work currently with Tom McComas, TM Books and Videos, and I hope you all have heard of us. If you have not, please stop down here at my booth and we'll inform you. Uh, we do make a lot of DVDs. I came up with an idea a couple years ago, pitched it to Tom about doing a how-to DVD on the legacy system. And I wanted to do something just kind of a basic to get people informed on it. So we came up with part one, modern O-gauge remote control. And this compares the old TMCC with the Cab 2 Legacy. And not only that, but it compares the locomotives, the differences between the original command control and the Legacy, and then the new Legacies as it's come through. Then everybody said, well, how do you program legacy? Are you, are you going to do something more? <clears throat> Excuse me. So we came up with part two. This goes into the advanced features. Uh, one of the things was how to program the legacy, upgrading it. Um, but I want to emphasize something, too, that neither one of these is extremely technical. What we want to do is to try to get people 
who don't know anything about command control to get into the hobby of command control <clears throat> and showing them the basics on it and how to use the system, not necessarily how it works, but how to use the system. So then we had an idea of coming up with a book. This is a companion book to the two DVDs, but it goes into more things. Lionel it came out with more items after we did this DVD, so we put this into the book. And then we got to thinking, what do we do with all the stuff Lionel comes out? We just can't keep putting out books and stuff. So we have a website. It's toytrainreview.com. Now, TM Books also has ilovetoytrains.com, tmbooksandvideo.com, but this one is toytrainreview.com. And what we do is anytime Lionel comes out with something new with Legacy or a new variation on it, we're going to film a small segment and put it up onto that website. So once you buy all these books, or even if you don't, you can still get onto that website and find all kinds of information on it. Um, the book here is kind of neat. And not just because I wrote it, but that's the main reason it's neat. Uh, yeah. Oh, I shamelessly plug everything here. I, I wrote uh, this, and my picture's on the back too, so if you forget what I look like, it's right there. It's turning out. I wrote 99% of this one too. Joe Stackler wrote a couple of sentences, so we had to put his name on it. Um, but one of the things I'm kind of proud on this book, and now that I'm looking through it, I can't find one of them. Ah, here we go. Okay, so here's, for example, the chapter. It's going to tell you what it is. This is phasing transformers. And then over here, it'll tell you exactly why you need to phase it and how to do it. But we have a shaded area down here. So you can go right to the shaded area, and it's step by step by step, right down the line, so if you forget how to do something, or if you say, geez, I remember something about phasing transformers. Oh yeah, there it is. Here you go, step by step by step. Um, I've got some flyers for you. Uh, I'm gonna leave them here, you can pick them up. I have plenty of those at my uh, booth as well. Uh, how many of you have purchased my DVDs and the book? Oh, a few of you. Oh, great. Well, I appreciate that. The rest of you, <laughs> Why not? No, seriously. Um, one of the things we just did, Tom uh, just made a, a deal with a distributor and they're picking up the book and the two DVDs. So I'm not allowed to do anything more than retail price on them, which is $20 on the book and 15 on each of the DVDs, which in my opinion is dirt cheap. So, but I am going to offer something to anybody that's here now. Anyone who would like to purchase the book I'm going to, and the DVDs, $40. And I do have a small amount, about 20 of them, where all three of us signed it. Myself, Joe Stackler, and Tom McComas. And this is one of them. We're all signed on the front. So if you guys come to my booth, tell me that you were at the, uh, the meeting today, I will make sure that you get one of these. And it's $40. And uh, that's for the bundle, yes. Yeah, you don't have to buy all of them, but I highly recommend that you do. Uh, we also have many other DVDs, and I highly recommend that you buy one of each, at least. And just to remind you, too, these make wonderful Christmas gifts. We're about 65 days out from Christmas, so you want to plan that right now. Um, no, all kidding aside now, seriously, uh, I'm very proud of the books, 
And uh, one of the things that we are trying to do is to get more people involved with it. Uh, the second DVD and the book also gets into the Lion Chief, Lion Chief Plus, and we get into the Wi-Fi. Joe Stackler, I got to give a nod to that guy, he does a fantastic job on photography. He shot all the photos, the stills that you see in the book, and he shot every bit of the DVD and the second one. Tom, Tom and I did a lot of number one. Um, but Joe also, when, when I wrote everything, when I wrote the scripts and I wrote the book, he took my directions and actually performed them with each piece of equipment to verify that I didn't screw up. And I didn't. I had everything was exactly right, but he actually performed each step programming the items and, and running them just to verify that everything that we put into this book is 100% accurate. So uh, I know I, you guys have got to get on to other things. Anybody have any questions uh, for me? Okay. Well, I do appreciate. Yeah, yes. Oh, we're in the Orange Hall. Um, yeah, it's go into this the door here, turn to your, yeah, whatever door is the closest here, <laughs> and turn to your left, go down the first aisle, we're right there. It's JJ1, I believe. Um, if you know where the LCCA booth is, we're right next to that. Harry Heike's uh, buildings, we're right across from him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, if you go down the aisle, there's that big LED lights for models. He's on one end, we're on the other. So, and we do have a new DVD, a layout DVD called Three Rail Scale. Um, features Norm Charbonneau's layout on it, as well as others. And that's doing quite well for us too. So, uh, please stop by the booth, say hello. Let me know that you were here at the meeting. You're going to get the special price on this. And you get the special one that's autographed by all of us. So again, I thank you very much for letting me take a few moments of your time. And hope to see you. Thank you, Bob. The uh, LCS partner program, I've panned it out. And I will also post in the summary. We have two LCS partners have participated in the meeting. Uh, E-Trains is one of them and high rail app is the other one uh, the high rail app started out at ten dollars to me that was worth every bit because you could remotely program all of your um, sensor tracks from an app so um, i got it actually got it on my phone here but you could you could program all your sensor tracks just from this app and to me that was worth ten dollars because at the time Lionel said, oh, you have to push the button. Well, what if you have it on the other side of your layout and you can't get to it? Well, that price has come down. It's, I think it's only two bucks now. So that's on the iTunes store. Unfortunately, it's just iTunes. Um, the E-Train app does the same thing, or the E-Train program is a PC program. That has a lot of that functionality built in as well. Another pretty good program. Um, it actually has information from the sensor track that ne ain't, that's not visible necessarily to the user, but it has like um, how, many, how many hours the engine is run, I believe. It has, uh, well, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but it has like a lot of information that just doesn't present itself either in the high rail app or even through line out. It's more of diagnos diagnostics from the engine telling it how long it's been running and such uh, stuff like that. Sort of like the MTH hours meeting, meet, metering, but uh, something like that. Um, I want to thank both of those partners. They've been with us now about uh, five years. We, we certainly love pushing anybody that does anything with Lionel Legacy LCS. That's why uh, we're happy to see Bob come in. Uh, I have both of Bob's DVDs in his book and uh, it, it's definitely worth 
the 40 bucks if you go over there. It, it, it does get into some of the, it, it's written for laymen. It's not written at a high technical level. It's written for the average hobbyist that just wants to learn the stuff. So uh, definitely make sure you get a flyer if you can. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up. Like I said, I'll put this PowerPoint that I made on, on the uh, summary. Uh, unfortunately, it was a lot of work. I wish we would have got to it, but I'd rather cover the stuff from line out. That's just a PowerPoint that I can put online, so it's not a big deal. Uh, I want to thank Dave Olson, who really wanted to be here, uh, just didn't work out with line out. Dean in customer service. Again, I want to thank Rudy, who for 10 years now has been putting up with some of my questions, uh, some, you know, I always tease the guys when I submit the questions. I'm like, some of these we've seen before. And I've, they probably answered some of the same questions 10 or 15 times. But it's my, I feel it's my job to submit every question to line out. I don't try to answer any questions on my own, even if it's the most basic question. It, you guys submit them to me to go to line out, and that's where I send them. So uh, thank Marty, too, as well. Yeah. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Dave for bringing this to video so that uh, we can share it with uh, everybody else on the OGR forum. I think it actually hits his YouTube page, so it's uh, don't have to be on the OGR forum. Uh, thank all of you, because obviously without you guys coming, and uh, we wouldn't be having a meeting. So again, no meeting in April. And uh, I... I'm planning on a meeting for the fall, but I'm going to kind of see how it goes because if nothing really new comes out, I, I don't know, you know, I could sit here and talk about the same old stuff over and over again, but I, that doesn't help anybody, I don't think. And uh, thank you for coming.